Welcome to another episode of Algorithms from the Standard Library, where we'll discuss the four different sorting algorithms from the Standard Library. Sort, stable sort, partial sort, and nth element. We will also go over the is sorted and is sorted until utility functions. We'll explain not only what each of these algorithms do, but also when to use which one to get the best performance for all your sorting needs. We'll start simple with the standard sort. Standard sort accepts an input range using two random access iterators and then sorts the range. For example, if we want to sort this whole array A, we can simply pass a.begin and a.end. The sort algorithms from the standard library all work using the standard swap to swap elements. This means that they make use of move operations when they are available. As a result, you can efficiently sort containers of elements that are expensive to copy, such as big strings. By default, the sort algorithm uses the less than operator, meaning it will sort the elements in non-decreasing order, or in other words, from low to high. If this is not what you want, you can supply a custom comparison function as the third argument. To sort the elements in decreasing order, we could pass an instance of std greater. std greater is a template greater than operator, and hence needs to be instantiated with the element type, int in this case. If you need something a bit more exotic than a greater than function, you can also supply your own functor, like this strange odd first comparison operator, which simply puts all odd numbers before even numbers. Of course, for such a small comparison operator, we can also just pass a lambda, like this. All the different sorting algorithms we'll discuss today support custom comparison operators. So you don't have to worry about the flexibility of these algorithms when trying to choose the right sorting algorithm for your project. Now, since I promised to tell you a little bit about the performance of the different sorting algorithms, let's make a sorting leaderboard, where we use the performance of the standard sort algorithm as a baseline to compare the other sorting algorithms against. The second sorting algorithm of today is the stable sort. As the name suggests, it performs a stable sort, which is a sort that preserves the relative order of elements that compare equally. To demonstrate this, I have colored the integers in A. If we execute a normal sort, we are only guaranteed that the elements are ordered in non-decreasing order afterwards. Note that the orange 3 was after the blue 3 in the original input, but now appears in front of it. Similarly, the order of the force is all mixed up. The stable sort algorithm sorts while maintaining the relative order of equal elements. The force are ordered blue, green, orange in both the original input as well as the stable sorted array. Stable sort is particularly useful when you want to sort more complex data based on different members while maintaining any order previously present. Here I have a list of name and age pairs. Now, say this list was already sorted by age before. If I now do a stable sort by name to put all the bobs in front of the Jane and Jims, you'll find that the people with the same name are still sorted by age. That's the power of stable sort. So, why would you not just use stable sort for all your sorting needs? That's where performance comes back into play. The extra constraint of keeping the relative order of equal elements the same in stable sort simply comes at a cost. So if you don't care about your sort being stable, you'll find that the normal sorting algorithm is faster. But what if you don't need every element to be sorted? Maybe you're only interested in the top three from a big list of elements. This is where partial sort comes in. Partial sort takes three iterators as input, a begin, a middle, and an end iterator, it then swaps elements around such that the elements indicated by the range begin to middle are those that will end up there if the whole range begin to end would have been sorted. In this case, where we don't supply a custom comparator and hence sort from low to high, we end up with the three lowest numbers from the begin to end range. The order of the numbers in the middle to end range is undetermined. Partial sort also has an underscore copy variant which you can use if you don't want to modify the input range. Partial sort copy accepts an input and an output range. It then automatically determines how many elements you want to sort based on the size of the output range. In this example, where we are still using the default comparison operator, it will sort the three smallest elements in the input range into the output container B. As you probably already guessed, sorting only a part of your input is going to be faster than sorting your whole input. So partial sort is a great algorithm to consider when you're only interested in creating the top 10. The same holds true for partial sort copy, but just keep in mind that you will be copying elements instead of moving them. The 
depending on the types that are stored in your container, this could be an expensive operation. The fastest sorting algorithm that we'll discuss today is nth element, where partial sort can be used to sort only a part of the range. Nth element is used to sort just enough that a single element is guaranteed to be in the correct position. This element is referred to as the nth element and is indicated by the second iterator passed to the algorithm. If we now execute nth element, two things are going to happen. First, the nth element, the fourth in this case, will be moved to the fourth position. In other words, the nth element is correctly sorted. Secondly, all elements smaller than the nth element will be moved such that they end up before the nth element. And similarly, those that are larger than the nth element end up after it. So, when would you use nth element? It is of course great for finding the nth element, and as such can be used to quickly determine the statistical median, as it only uses a linear number of comparisons. Aside from that, the fact that this nth element acts as a pivot, along which the smaller and larger elements are partitioned, makes it a great building block for certain algorithms. I can, for example, recursively call nth element to fully sort the container. This way of sorting is called quick sort. And that makes this our final overview of sorting algorithms. Of course, there's one thing that is even faster than the fastest sorting algorithm, and that is not sorting at all. The standard library offers two functions to check if your input is already sorted. We have std is sorted, which takes a begin and end iterator and simply returns a boolean indicating whether the range is sorted. And just like the different sorting algorithms, is sorted also accepts a comparator as an optional third argument. Lastly, there's the is sorted until algorithm, which in my opinion has a somewhat misleading name. Just like is sorted, it accepts an input range. But instead of returning a boolean, indicating whether the range is sorted, it will return an iterator to the first element that is not sorted. In this example, this is the number 5, the first element that is smaller than its predecessor, the number 7. This means that if you take the range a.begin until the iterator returned by is sorted until, you have the largest sorted subrange starting at a.begin. That covers all the sorting related algorithms in the standard library. If you liked this video, Make sure to check out more algorithms from the standard library by going to the playlist in the description. Or perhaps have a look at one of these videos suggested by the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more bits of Q. See you next time.